Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Well, we're here at the Rail River Folk School at 303 Railroad Street Southwest in Bemidji. My name is Jessica Saucedo. I'm one of the co-founders here at the Folk School. And we are here tonight at First Friday. And um, it's our Northwoods Folk Collective featuring open mic and a coffee house for all of the local arts and talents that want to come and show off their talents. First Friday always features a new artist. So we'll have new paintings, new drawings, new silk screens, something to that effect. Always uh, local and oftentimes would be um, maybe their first show. We've had several first time artists. We've also had many experienced artists. And then as we progress after the initial opening of the night, so you can hang out, talk to the artist. I'm Alice Blessin. We are at the Rail River Folk School and this is the reception for my retrospective of the last 10 years of my paintings. Well, I have been watching the Rail River Folk School and luckily they had an opening for June so I just jumped right in. And this place is so cool and funky that uh, my paintings kind of want to live here. But I'm, I'm just really glad to be here. This is a great space. The Rail River Folk School is going to, I think in the next couple years, is going to prove itself to be a very valuable part of the Bemidji community. Art community, music community, poetry. This is a space where pretty much anything could happen, which is really cool. And I think that everything will happen here. I think it's exactly what Bemidji needed. I'm trying to learn how to illustrate and write children's books and it's really difficult. <laughs> and I've been working on it for about a year and I got a McKnight Fellowship from the Region 2 Arts Council last year to go to a couple different workshops for illustrating children's books and it's been really helpful. So I've kind of jumped into that world and hopefully in the next couple years I'll be published. My name is Aaron Tank. Um, we are at the Wild Hair Bistro in Bemidji and uh, I'm the artist of the month for June here in 2012 so it's my reception and uh, I got some photos up on the on the walls here at the Wild Hair. For me I think doing uh, natural photos is just something that fits with my personality and ever since I was a kid I would always be out in the woods. I kind of grew up in the country and around wildlife. I was fascinated by salamanders and, and turtles and reptiles when I was a young kid. And I think that's carried on to my uh, adult life. Uh, just I was never losing that fascination for uh, wildlife and, and the natural world. Oh, I think the community here in Bemidji is, is very fortunate to have a, a venue such as the Wild Hair that is really supportive of the local art scene and constantly bringing new artists in here. So I think that the world could use more places like this where people can just go view art that's created by their neighbors and local people here that are just kind of doing a lot of creative things. I'm Noemi Ellsworth. I'm from the Cabin Coffee House and Cafe in downtown Bemidji on 3rd Street. Well, this is very exciting. We have our artist's reception for June, and we have a variety of artists this, this month, which is very exciting because you get to see a lot of different styles of artists in our community. The theme is Bemidji, Bunyan, and Bikes, which is very appropriate with Bemidji becoming bike friendly. The Paul Bunyan pieces that are standing out to me in this show are on our stage is the paper mache, and that is half Paul Bunyan and half Babe, which is just cooler than cool, setting next to the bicycles. And we have recycled art used on shoes, like taking old shoes and using that into a piece of art. So that we have recycled art, that always stands out. And let's see, we have painting on glass jars. Something as simple, taking a mason jar and painting on it, any theme that you would like. We have a jar with Paul Bunyan and a jar with Babe. Those are pretty cool. We have tennis shoes. You can take a plain white tennis shoe and create a Paul and a Babe matching pair of shoes. How cool is that? I just love that. And, you can, and it's wearable art as well. Having art displayed in your business uh, creates an atmosphere where people feel comfortable uh, coming in here, they get to know other people in the community, people that they didn't even know did art. I'm Eric Evanson, I'm a graphic designer, illustrator, and graphic novelist, and I have some work up here at the Cabin Coffee House and Cafe. One is called Barbarian, Paul, and Babe, and it is basically my interpretation of what Paul Bunyan and Babe the Blue Ox would be 
if run through the filter of high fantasy, Conan the Barbarian style, comic book art. My other piece, basically it's a graphic design piece. I think I just called it Best City on the Mississippi, but it was just my way of taking the Paul and Bunyan statues and making it look a little hipstery and a little bit, give it kind of an album cover vibe. It's really cool for me here because I don't actually do a lot of exhibiting. Um, I, I used to kind of live in that world, but uh, left it behind. I became a graphic designer, and uh, started working for clients, working with clients, and um, then I just kind of stopped exhibiting my work. And so uh, I am always looking for little moments like this where I can put something together and uh, include it in a, a small show like this, something that's kind of celebratory in nature and it doesn't have to fit within a big medium or anything like that so an exhibition like this gives me an opportunity to be playful and do some work that I'm not usually able to do. I'm Emily Wenlin. I'm at Dunn Brothers Coffee House with my show. I'm showing different illustrations that I do. I use micron pen and watercolor. I'm a student at BSU and I'm gonna graduate next December with my art degree. So this is the first Friday of June, and you can see different art displayed around Bemidji. It's a fun feeling to, you kind of get a sense of community with the other artists in Bemidji, knowing that you're showing your art, and this is kind of their big night showing their art. I think it's a really cool opportunity, the first Friday art walks for community members to walk around and be able to see what artists in their area are doing and have so many options for a Friday night. There's many people that don't think they're artistic, but because the more art that there is around, I think it opens up people's minds to try something different. We have so many artists in the Bemidji area, it's just people love coming up here and coming to Bemidji. There's all of the different restaurants and different venues that are showing the art makes more people aware of art, and it, it just brings you kind of back to nature as well, and makes people feel better about themselves when they know that they can add something, whether it be a new piece of art or taking something recycled and ma making metal sculptures. People are enjoying it, and they, they're meeting more people. It's like, oh, who is that created by? And then, then you, you know another person being. It makes it more human. I think it just features how um, rich of talent we are in talents and how diverse that talent is. So the community can actually have sort of a, a place in which to feature that talent. And you know, that always being something that's renewed with every new artist, every first timer. It gives um, a home for our community to say, hey, maybe I don't fit in at the country bar. Maybe I don't fit in at the rock and roll club. Now this is a little bit different. It's got that arts meets the craftsman movement. You know, we feature people that that really care about what they're doing and, and also want our very open arms to new people. So you can, you, you, the community can see a place for growth and change here, I think. I don't know, I'm a pretty easygoing person. I love being in Bemidji. I love being an artist here, it's like the best. I couldn't ask for anything better, yeah. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4, 2008.